Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Shirazi, a board certified dermatologist. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanna to spill the tea on a question that I get very often, very regularly across my social media platforms. And that is, what have I done to myself? What types of injections, lasers, plastic surgery? And I wanna be transparent and honest. I'm not gonna pull a JLo and say, you know, I've just been using Aussie MD skincare products or olive oil or whatever. I wanna be transparent and give you guys the lowdown on all the things I've done to myself and other people have done to me and some mistakes that I've fortunately been able to correct because you know, cosmetic surgery and beauty treatments at the end of the day are medical treatments and they have complications and risks. So uh, yes, always choose your injector wisely. I hope that you will find this valuable and informative. Let's spill the tea. But before we get started, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Comment below, let me know if you're surprised, shocked, or if you've had anything done. I'd love to hear about you. Okay, let's start with the basics because I think that a lot of people rush off just basic things like sun protection. I get so many comments that sunscreen is carcinogenic and I'm spreading you know, false information about sunscreen and so forth. Let me just say, sun protection is the best thing you can do for your skin. I don't care how many Botox injections or fillers you get, plastic surgery, protect your assets because starting at the age of 20, we lose 1% of collagen per year, and that goes up as you get older. So you gotta protect what you have. So I personally have been very good about protecting myself, not just my face, but just my body, my entire adult life. I mean, when I was a teenager, yes, I would go to the pool and so forth, and one time, one time I was out on a jet ski without reapplying sunscreen and I got so burned. I think I was 19 years old and honestly, I didn't scar, but I was scarred for life. Since then, since I saw what damage was done to my skin from the sun, I hid. I never go out without a hat. I always try to cover up as much as I can when I'm out. So that's number one. Number two, lifestyle. So you wanna, you know, be as healthy as you can be. And I think exercise is a really important part of the anti-aging game. Even if it's just walks you take for three times a day. Because that physical activity has been shown to release all these interleukins from muscles that play a role in our skin and all the anti-aging pathways. So exercise, sun protection, and then just overall healthy eating. I think it's really important getting you know plenty of fruits and vegetables. Just a well-rounded lifestyle. You don't have to be extreme and be like super clean with your eating and so forth, but I think the healthier you are on the inside, the better it is for all your organs, including the skin, which is the largest organ that we have on our bodies. So those are the basics. And then in terms of skincare, you know, it helps. I'm a dermatologist. I studied the science of skin. I, you know, did a lot of research and read a lot of papers. And I've been on retinol as long as I can remember. In the past, I've been on prescription retin-A because there's so much science and data behind retin-A. And I think a lot of people say, oh, I'm allergic to it, or I can't use it, or they, they keep putting it off. Oh, it's summer. You know, I don't want to start it because it makes you sensitive to the sun. No, you can still use it in the summer. I use it every season, all year long. I can't go to bed without putting it on. And so I lately have been using Lift and Renew, which is retinol combined with Bakushiol because so many of my patients were having problems with prescription Retin-A, wanted to develop something that was just as effective, but didn't have all the side effects. So when you combine retinol with other ingredients, you can make it more potent, especially ingredients that enhance or amplify the results of retinol. And one of them is Bakushiol, which is a plant-derived 
ingredient and combined with retinol, the studies have shown to be just as effective as prescription retin-A, but without the irritation. Because let's face it, the dryness, the peeling, it almost makes you look older and so people stop. So that's why I'm so excited about this product that's available over the counter and I personally use it. I haven't been using prescription retin-A, I would say the past year since I've been, you know, incorporating it into my routine. If you're gonna pick one superstar skincare ingredient, whether you're a skincare person or you're not, whatever you do, put on sunscreen in the morning and put on a retinol at night. And if that's all you do, that's like 85% of what you need in terms of skin anti-aging. And don't underestimate it because you may not see the results like boom like a laser, but over years, you do notice those changes. I am a firm believer for texture, for lines, for just the quality of the skin when it's retinized. And we see this when we do lasers because we put people on retinols before we even laser them. They heal better, their results are better. So I can make an entire episode. Check out my video on Retinol 101. I won't bore you there. So those are kind of the basics. And then let's get into plastic surgery and cosmetic surgery. Starting with the minor stuff, Botox. I was 26 years old. I was doing my very first cosmetic dermatology rotation with Mitch Goldman, who was a very well-known dermatologist, and I was, you know, he was one of my mentors, and I was at his office, and I got my first Botox injection. I was so nervous. I was very expressive. I mean, my muscles were just really strong. So at 26, I did my glabella and my forehead, and I loved it, mainly because my eyebrows are a little asymmetric. So I noticed when I got the Botox, they were really symmetric, and then it made my skin so smooth, and, and I loved it. So I didn't get it every three months because I was a resident, and you know, I didn't really have access, I guess, at that time, and I didn't have a lot of money to spare on getting you know Botox injections. So I would say I probably got it whenever I could and that may have been like once a year, a couple times a year, until I got to be more of a senior dermatology resident. So starting in my early 30s, I started getting it more regularly. And I would say I got it, you know, at least about three times a year. And then I was pregnant a couple times in my 30s, so I took some breaks, which I think is important. I've also had Botox injected in my neck for the neck bands and to help give a little bit of a neck lift. I've also had injected in my chin because my chin crinkles when I speak and that got stronger as I aged. And I've also had injections of Botox around my crow's feet, but not as often because I'm just not very strong there for whatever reason. I've also had Botox injected into my DAO, which is this muscle here. This is the muscle that pull, and I can't do it because I have active Botox in. But this muscle that runs from the corners of the mouth down to the jawline here is responsible for pulling the corners down. So by relaxing that muscle using Botox, it allows the muscles up top to lift up and lift the corners of the mouth. So I've had Botox injections here, but when I've done my lip fillers, I've also added some Botox in the corners just to add support in this mouth area because as we age, we do tend to lose structure and volume. So it's important to add some fillers to help with replacing some structure here. So I've had you know Botox you know over the years. I'm not a super fanatic about it. I really do like to wait until my muscles make their way back. And more recently, I've actually not had it for like I, I went for like a year or two. I really wanted to you know get my muscle strength back. And in terms of other injectables, when I was 28, still a dermatology resident, I got my very first lip filler and that was Juvederm and I loved it because my lips were fuller and I have big features, so I have big eyes, big nose and so I felt like when I got my lips done it, it didn't make those features stand out as much. So um, Juvederm I got the first time in my 20s then I got it again a couple of times in my 30s but by the time I got into my mid 30s I realized 
that my Juvederm had migrated and it had gone all around my lips. It had gone into my chin area and my lips, they were just unusual. So I had it all dissolved. And I think that once you get Juvederm in your lips a few times, it stays. Whether it's from the collagen stimulation or just the filler doesn't dissolve. Whatever it might be, I haven't gotten lip filler, I would say, in four or five years since I dissolved it and I just kind of left it. And then I started to see hollowness under my eyes after I had my first baby in my early 30s. And this is when I was out and starting to practice and I started developing eye glow, which Here's a video on what that is. It's a white filler blend that helps lift the under eyes, restore volume, but um, stabilize ligaments and help with under eye rejuvenation. So I got my very first under eye filler, which I've had eye glow twice. I have not had any other eye filler except for eye glow once in my early 30s and again in my late 30s. So in the past over a decade, I've had under eye filler twice. And then in my mid thirties, I also started to notice some fat loss and volume loss in my temples and my brows. And I have had Restylane injections in my temples and my brows to help restore that. Because as we age, particularly starting in our early to mid thirties, we tend to lose these essential fat pads that keep our skin looking plump and lifted. And so I, noticed all these changes and so I essentially my goal was to replace that volume. I've also had radius in my cheeks. I would say two or three sessions of that probably every two to three years. The reason I choose radius in that area is because it's been shown to stimulate type 1 collagen whereas the other fillers stimulate type 3 collagen. It's also a very tricky filler so you have to be really experienced in injecting it because you can't dissolve it so if you get it in a vessel so it's a tricky one so it's not one that i usually recommend people get i've also had radius blended with hyaluronic acid to use on the lateral face because we do have these fat pads here that also diminish with time and i felt like my face was just getting really sort of gaunt so i wanted to you know fill it in a little bit okay so i've had Restylane in my chin crease here as well as Restylane in my folds and I have had one syringe of Voluma placed in my mid 30s deep in my cheeks and at the time I think it was too much but I'm glad I did it then because I feel like it's kept my medial cheeks nice and full and I feel like it has not dissolved and I don't plan on really adding any more right now, but maybe in a year or two, I'll put another syringe here. And then I'll also say my jawline. I've had my jawline injected with fillers, I would say about three, four sessions over the past 12 years, because as we age, the jawline starts to get less defined, the angle starts to change. So I've had my jawline injected and I will credit Dr. Amir Muradi with doing a lot of my injections. I've been really happy with the jawline injection. There's more guys, there's more guys. We're probably like halfway through. <laughs> what about surgeries? Because I know you guys are wondering. I have had my nose done twice and I'll tell you why. So, and I, this is one of my regrets in, in life, I guess, is when I was getting married, I've always been very insecure about my nose, right? I've always had really kind of a big nose. So two months before I was getting married, I decided I'm gonna have a nose job. I've been waiting, you know, all this time and haven't done it, I'm just gonna go for it. And I didn't interview a lot of surgeons, I just sort of picked one, but then I realized he was not a nose specialist, he was a general plastic surgeon. And although he didn't screw up my nose, I felt like he didn't do a good job. So never rush plastic surgery, always do your research, you know, take your time. And so I wasn't happy after the first nose job because I felt like my tip was narrow, but it was also, you know, still down and didn't really open up the mouth area. So my second nose job I had with Dr. Karam, 
who was a really good friend of mine and I've seen him work, I've actually operated with him. So he did my second nose and it's still not small, but you know, the tip is lifted and you know, I think it fits my face. Uh, it doesn't look like I've had a nose job, I don't think, because I still get comments like, you've had all this work done, why haven't you done your nose? So people don't realize that I've had my nose done twice, guys. So nose job and then, oh, so I've always had larger breasts. Even when I was, you know, in my 20s, I was thin, but I had larger breasts. That's just the way my body has always been my whole life. So after I had my kids, I had like no breasts. Like, I don't know, saggy, it was just very foreign to me. So I have had breast implants, which now I want to take out because I want to be smaller. That's all the plastic surgery I've done. But recently I had Invisalign because as I've aged, I've noticed I've lost teeth in my, just the whole mouth area gets almost like sunken in or smaller, almost rotates in. So I had Invisalign for a good year and a half and braces to help maintain the structure of my mouth because I do have a really big mouth. And so that's been really great. I've been really happy to go through that. Orthodontist, don't underestimate that. All right, so now what about skin? Everybody always says, you know, your skin's so smooth. What do you do? Uh, aside from the skincare and the Retin-A, I've had microneedling. I've had some laser resurfacing, but not CO2 with the fractionated erbium laser. I've had lots of diamond glow treatments, which I love. They're so refreshing. You know, you would think I would be able to do this all the time, but I'm so busy treating other people. I don't actually get a chance to do it as much as I'd like. It's always my goal to try to do more of these, you know, simple skin treatments it's right in my office, right? But I'm so busy with my kids, my family, and everything else in life, I feel like I need to do more of that time for myself. I've also done radio frequency. So several sessions of radio frequency around the eyes, jawline, and neck. And so I think that's helped with kind of maintaining. I've also done soft wave, which is ultrasound, but it's not like old therapy. It doesn't go as deep as old therapy. I've also had BBLs, forever young BBLs to help with broken capillaries, sunspots. So I do that, that's really easy to do. And lots and lots of laser hair removal because I'm so hairy, I'm Persian, so <laughs> I just got a lot of hair. And so check out my video on laser hair removal. So in a nutshell, <laughs> That only took three hours. Um, that's all I've done and I plan on doing more skin treatments because I feel like people, you know, are so focused on getting injections, they forget about just the overlying skin and that's really important. All right guys, because so many of you always ask me about my skincare routine, I'm, I'm gonna link it just to make it easier. And comment below, let me know what you've had done because I'd love to hear your anti-aging journey. Thanks guys for tuning in, until next time. Thank you.